is One Piece overrated? Let's think about this. Three, two, yeah. It kinda is. Hey guys, I'm Kushroka, and well, let's get started. Let me point out that One Piece is my personal favorite manga, but I still believe that it's overrated. Thing is, what I've learned through my former stay in the manga stream forum before they shut down is that One Piece is for lack of a better word overrated. I can also remember going to the manga stream forums and seeing people just orgasming over how amazing the, the One Piece chapter was but I very rarely saw anybody critiquing the chapters and while it's true that Oda does tend to do a pretty good job with his chapters and there's rarely anything critiquable as long as you're not very analytic, uh, it's true that um, people tend to just freak out over how amazing it is and they don't really look too deep into the story or the characters or what's really going on. And so I basically broke it down into two main reasons why One Piece is overrated simply because people don't really look into it too much and think about how average of a series it is if you really think about it sure it's one of the best written series but as far as its genre as a battle manga it's not really too special uh, I'm going to be trying to be as objective as possible with this but yeah so let's look into the story the story starts out really slow and that's really a constant throughout like the progression of the story there's very few moments where the story actually picks up at an extreme pace the few like points where the story is like really fast paced is towards the end of the war and towards the end of um impel down besides that there really aren't that many points in the story where it's excessively fast paced I mean the story is really really like starts here and this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens and then it all wraps together and then the arc and at some point they all like all the story arcs come together a saga blah 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 who gets a story thing is that as far as the pro progression of the story it's really slow the, every arc has its own story and not necessarily does it completely apply to the world around it for example let's take the entire East Blue Saga all it is is Luffy meeting his the first five original Straw Hats it's just him meeting them it's not until they hit the Grand Line in around like chapter 101 I believe that they actually start getting somewhere as far as story goes because if you really look at all the arcs in One Piece up until that point, which I think would be about five, yeah, about five story arcs, there really is not that much going on as far as the central story. It's just mostly a very, very long introduction arc. After that this is when the story really picks up because he starts seeing, like, for example, get introduced, he truly gets introduced to Shikibukai because, well, you knew about them from the Barati arc when about talking about Mihawk but besides that you knew nothing about them but then you get introduced to VV and Crocodile and all that jazz and you really get a good picture of how dark the world truly is and I think that's where the story really got its like footing as far as as great as it became and how well regarded it came but even though even after that point the story is not constantly either speeding up it's not even a constant like progression it's consistently shifting as its speed in story the broke work saga really introduces you to a lot of main characters that would be important later on mainly speaking crocodile bethel main cave mr two and um mr three whose name i don't remember his real name i don't remember they really don't show for a very long time but then later on in the war saga they become really important they help they become Luffy's quote-unquote crew during that saga starting at Impel Down 
and later on at the war, that's really, like, you meet characters along the way that later on are important, starting with, um, that saga. If you really think about it, Laboon is just, like, a pointless arc up until, like, chapter 400 or something. And I think that's one of the major drawbacks of the series, because a lot of what goes down is not really important until a lot t a long time later. For example, the Arlong arc is just like the total predecessor to the Fishman Island arc. If you could put the, the two arcs right beside each other and they're basically parallel with each other simply because the same stuff happens just in a different way. And that's another major uh, point against the series as far as how quote unquote amazing it is because a lot of the same repetition happens. And while it's not always as like easily seen as the Arlong arc and the Fishman Island arc, it's very important that you recognize this as if you're trying to look at the series from an objective point and still try to like it. Every arc has the main like formula. Straw hats go somewhere, they meet somebody, they get like an idea of what's going on, Luffy decides, oh we're gonna help these people, they help the people, and then they leave. And that's what the whole series is. But along the way, you start meeting characters and story that wraps together. The characters are a very important part of the story. Obviously, like any story has to have characters, unless I'm missing something. The characters all have flaws. You cannot write a story without a character that has flaws. And while that can be a major asset to the character's progression and development, not all the characters in the series are getting the development or the progression that they require. My main personal problem with the series is the character of Zoro, and I don't really understand why he has so many fanboys. To be honest, he's probably the second least progressed character in the whole series. Aside from his relationship with Tashi, he really has no reason to progress. His backstory is very simple, and yet really tragic like all the others. He was a swordsman in a town when he was a kid. He went to a dojo. I think it was a dojo. Well, anyway, so his teacher taught him how to fight. He was very cocky until he met this one chick. I think her name was Kushina. I might be wrong. And don't quote me on that, please. Anyways, she was really good at fighting. He was pretty good too. She was better, but then they became friends because she told him that uh, he was so lucky to be a man because men are stronger than women later on, blah blah blah, and then she died. And that really made, is what makes Zoro. And besides that, and meeting Luffy, which made him decide that he really should just be loyal to somebody, he really does not progress as a character. Every character in the series has some kind of iconic persona. For example, if you think about Rayleigh, he is the quote-unquote Zoro of Gold Roger's crew, but if you really think about it, he goes a lot farther than that because I could not imagine Zoro training somebody to be the next Pirate King. He'd probably just look at them and tell them to go get them some booze and then leave. Or probably slice them in half, because Zorge is that character. Rayleigh, his persona, and his really his point in the series is to show Luffy how much he needs to progress and become stronger and what he needs to do. Many people believe that the series has to be flawless, and a character has to be flawless, and they can never, they always have to win, or they always have to lose, and they have to lose and win. But really, what he asks the series is that he needs. He shows that he shows that Luffy is not the character that we think he is. He is really weak, and he really needs to become a man, and that's what he does. And through that, he really proves that the series is pointlessly praised because within its own world the characters that we're following or in love with and everything are 
really show the weakest people there. I mean, they're stronger than a lot of people, but at the same time, they're weaker than even more. And that makes me, leads me to believe that as time goes by, they're, they're going to start fighting people that, are, that should be stronger than them, and they're going to somehow pull out on top and pull a fairy tale every once in a while. And while that may, might be acceptable on occasion, if it becomes regular, which I see becoming, or happening, it will start to hurt the series. And I hope that people start looking towards that and realizing that it, the series is very overrated. I like to close this off by saying that while I do love the series and it has its drawbacks and it, people really need to stop looking at the series with blindness and just gorging out their feelings and like amazement was oh my god Zora did this oh, Luffy's the best character ever blah 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 no that's not really helping future writers or people that are inspired by the series to be better for really giving Oda no reason to even attempt at improving the series so while the series is amazing in its own right it should not be praised as quote unquote the best because there are a lot of problems with the series and it should be look it shouldn't be looked down upon but it should be but it should be critiqued in its moments where it really needs to be critiqued not every series is amazing from point A to point Z there are flaws within that and people need to stop being so blind to it this has been Goose Roca. I would love it if you guys give me a like and or subscribed or both would be even better. Uh, this has been my first video. I hope you guys liked it. I plan on continuing doing these, and I would love it if you guys left a comment and all that. I'll be glad to respond to them. Please share this video, and don't forget. Hit me out like a shameless whore. Peace.